a lot of directed DVD sequels here, which is sort of this whole this whole facet of cinema that is completely new to me. Um, so I'd be very excited to try out Starship Troopers 2, Hero of the Federation, because you know. I, I, I love the sort of the political messaging of the first one, like Verhoeven's a fucking genius. But really, all I want is hardcore right-wing propaganda that knows what it is. So I'm gonna totally, yeah, yeah. This is absolutely a winner for me. Starship Troopers without any of the nuance. That's exactly what we want. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. I do not know what this is, but that is a fantastic talk. Talk. This is called. Um, is that Anna Paquin? Does that look like Oscar winner Anna Paquin to you? I don't think it is. Um, okay, okay. The Reaper's biker gang wants him for a murder he did not, he did, he did not commit. They're called the Hellions. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. This is, <laughs> this is already like, fuck. We are on to some absolute canon here right now. Um, okay, let's see. Are you truly a British cinephile if you don't rewatch the greatest auditions from the X Factor over and over again? I wonder if they've got the one where there's those two girls and they sing that Phil Collins song and then one of them fucking elbows the other in the face. Because that, to me, is just sort of the high point of visual media. I think it sort of says a lot about Britain and where it was. And where it's going as well, and where it's going is right into the elbow of an angry girl from a Midlands council estate who just got kicked off the X Factor. And that is what Brexit is, basically. The problem with being into film criticism, I guess, is that we spend a lot of time in really dark rooms getting no sun and no exercise. So I reckon Anthony's 70s workout would be sort of a perfect antidote to some of the problems that come from a cinephilia. <laughs> There's a lot of Taken here. No one has taken any any Taken from the shelf, which is... I mean, it's not surprising. Oh, Sharp. <laughs> is it the big... Oh, Sharp's, Sharp's Waterloo, Sharp's Eagle, Sharp's Revenge. Um, it's probably mellowed out because I'm around Southern at the minute, but I am from North for the, for the closet watchers who, who don't know. And I used to go to a chip shop in Sheffield when I went to university that was run by Dan Bean, who was Sean Bean's nephew. And he used to have exclusively episodes of Sharp on a tiny little sort of like box TV. And it's like 3 fucking a.m. and you're just sort of there pranging out with Sharp on the TV and some horrendous radioactive chicken nuggets in your hands. And it's, yeah, it's an experience. Okay, okay. So, he's got a new one out soon. It's our, our mate Quentin. And, yeah, I am so, so exhausted with him. But Glorious Bastards is still one that I will go back to every single time. That opening scene, guys, is the finest theatre known to man. Just a, it's, 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 the, it's the modern waiting for Godot, if you ask me. That, that amazing sort of two-man sort of back and forth. Okay, okay. There are far too many No Country for your Old Men here as well. Come on, like, come on. It was such a good year for movies. This was up against so many ridiculous things, and it, it, it won. What was, I can't even remember. What it, what it beats out, but it was like, it was all fucking tragic. Gino, Michael Clayton, Gino, Michael Atonement, Clark. and uh, There'll Be Blood. Fuck me, There Will Be Blood. Like, that is, that is a seminal year. Um, oh, here's one. Um, the first film <laughs> I fell asleep in the cinema watching, and there's been a lot of them since, but this will always, you never forget your first. You never forget your first. So thank you for that, George Clooney. I really appreciate it. Um, I don't remember watching this one, um, but, um, so that's why I'm covered in tattoos with the, uh, with the spoilers on it. Um, so I feel like this is like a classic CEX banger. Um, just, you know, it's the perfect sort of beers and buds kind of movie on a Friday night. You just played a bit too much FIFA, no one's really that arsed anymore, the Stellas are running low and you're going to have to switch to Strongbow and everyone knows that's a bad idea. But you've got Colin and Brendan and Ray to look after you. And Martin McDonough, back when he, you know, had any sense of anything interesting about him, basically. <laughs> Bless him. Probably one of the finest crops of, of films known to man. 
I think I'm happy there if I'm overdoing it. Based off the autobiography of Toby Young, what a classic. Of course he sees himself as a Hugh Granty, Simon Peggy style romantic hero. I don't think he's actually slept with Megan Fox or Kirsten Dunst in real life though, so, you know, it's, it's just nice to see people like live out their, their fantasies, you know. That's what cinema's really about, isn't it? It's Toby Young getting to have sex with some of the most beautiful women in Hollywood, so, you know, you know, you win some and you lose some. <laughs>